Sparks Camp 2009. Has it been a good week? Has it been a good week? Hey, I'm going to give you guys some quick fun facts. I grew up in the town of Mustang, Oklahoma. Yep. And I attended the bridge from the time I was six until I was 19. Um, so, yep. And then my first job was the very first student pastor at People's Church. So, and then, but, but Bo is way better than me. I'll just let y'all know that. Uh, and then now I'm the pastor at Victory Family Church. So it's a big, like, uh, it's like a weird deal. And then I didn't know this till a couple days ago. My childhood babysitter from Kearney, Oklahoma is here. So that's even, that's, there, see, I told you. So, uh, so this is a cool camp. Uh, and I'm super honored to be here. Uh, this is the camp I grew up coming to. It was a different location, but I, I grew up as a kid. I was sitting in uh, your seats uh, just learning and growing, and some of the most significant moments of my life with God were at this, at this camp. And so I love, I love that that's the last night. It's the last opportunity, uh, Sparks 2019, last opportunity for you guys uh, to connect with Jesus in a distraction-free camp environment. And so, man, my heart and my prayer is that, man, the next several minutes, you'll just be able to, to lock in and let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you and, and teach you as we uh, jump into to the Word. Before I get to it, uh, how many of you always appreciate a, a good upgrade? Like, you, when you get upgraded, it comes through your phone. You used to, like, everybody likes to get up. I remember I grew up on the original Nintendo, not like the original Nintendo, right? But like I love, I, I don't do that no more. Like I went all through the stages. Anybody, anybody still play the regular Nintendo? It's like vintage now. Yeah, it's cool, right? You go from that, you upgrade to the Nintendo 64, and then you get the 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 what is it now? I got an Xbox One. I don't know what what is. The, I heard about the yeah. You all Xbox people? It's not a part of the sermon. It don't even matter. Uh but I like, I like a good upgrade on just about anything. Anybody flip phone people? Anybody, you, you remember a flip phone? Yeah. You're liars. You don't know nothing about a flip phone. You're too young for that stuff. Uh, anybody, anybody this week, this week, anybody upgrade boyfriends this week? Any girls, you upgrade a boyfriend this week? Come on. That's why you came. I know that's why some of you came. It's fine. I'm just happy that you're here. Hey, check this out. About a year ago, I, I, I got my wife a car. I got my wife a Nissan, right? Uh, we're practical people, so uh, I got her a, a Nissan, okay? And I was about, I, I wanted to get it. It's an SUV. I wanted to get it before we went on vacation to San Antonio. So I get this car, and we looked for a long time. I found the car that I wanted, and so I get the car, and then there's something wrong with it. And so I, I called the dealership, and he's, I don't know him well, but I know him a little bit, and he said, man, I'm so sorry. I'm going to hook you up. And I said, no, I don't, you don't understand. Like, you can't just hook me up. Like, I got to drive to San Antonio, and I need this SUV to take my family. He said, do not worry about it. I'm going to hook you up, right? And he owns the dealership, so I thought if he's going to hook me up, I was getting excited. I was so excited. What's, what's going to happen here? So I pull in the dealership. I drop my Nissan off, and he rolls in this brand new, fat, huge Mercedes. And I said, dude, I can drive this to San Antonio? He said, Take it, you keep it as long as you want. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I get in this car. It's, 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 it's the most unbelievable thing I've ever been in in my entire life. I didn't understand the thing that was happening in the car, right? Like there's touch screens everywhere. There's computer screens everywhere. When I'm driving this car, I'm not playing. When I'm driving this car, people come up on my, on my left. It'll, it talks to me and it'll say, like, car approaching on your left. It's unbelievable, right? If, if I veer, this is true, like I was driving, if I veer a little bit to the right, something would come up and it would speak to me and it would say, maybe it's time to pull over for a cup of coffee. I promise you I'm not making this up. This, it's, it's the most insane thing I've ever been in in my life. But here, here's what I, I found myself doing two things. I had my kids in the car, had these TVs, like these, the, insane. It's sick. These TVs, here's what I found myself doing. I couldn't figure out anything in the car. So I didn't use any of it. Like, so it has all these amazing features. My kids are griping at me. Dad, why can't we use the TV? Can you turn the TV on? Can we watch a movie? I'm driving to San Antonio. That's a long way. And my kids, Dad, can we please? And finally I said, Daddy is stupid. I have no idea how to do anything in this car. I'm sorry. And then I'll, I'm going to tell you the second thing that happened to me. 
I drove it for a couple of days around Norman where I work and where I live and where I know some people. And here's what I found myself doing. Every time I would see anybody, you know what I would do? I would apologize and say, it's not my car. Because I didn't want anybody to think like I was taking the tithe money and rolling in a Mercedes, right? And so I was nervous and I was actually embarrassed. I was riding the sickest car I've ever been in in my life. I was driving it, but I was embarrassed by it. And when I was driving on the way back from San Antonio, it hit me. This is kind of how we treat the Holy Spirit. One of two things happens to us. There's so much to it. That we end up saying, there's just too much there. It's too confusing. I'll just stay away from it. It's just easier not to have to deal with it. Or the other thing is we end up being embarrassed by it. And so we're only cool with the Holy Spirit in certain environments like camp. But when you go back to school, we're not quite as open. And we're embarrassed and apologize for what's happening and God is doing in our life. And so t tonight, I just want to take a few minutes, and I'm going to break it down. I'm going to try to be as simple as possible and, and talk just a little bit about the Holy Spirit tonight. I don't want you to go back to your schools and be embarrassed by the Holy Spirit. Because there's nothing to be embarrassed by. It's, it's like driving a Mercedes. It's just a constant upgrade for your life. So ch check, check out how Jesus Sets everything up for the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me. Now, think about this passage as I'm reading it because it's, it's crazy. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and will do even greater things than these. So let's stop right there. Jesus, let's talk about the works he was doing. Like Jesus is turning water into wine. Jesus is making blind people see. Jesus is healing lepers. Jesus is bringing people from death to life. Like Jesus is doing the most incredible miracles the world has ever seen. And he says, not only will you do the things that I've done, but you'll do even greater things. It doesn't make sense. Why aren't we doing greater things right now? Be be because, he says this, he says, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Talking about the Holy Spirit. The world, those of you that are embarrassed, listen. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. Jesus says, I'm sending you something that is better. What he's saying is the spirit in you is better than Jesus beside you. Think about That's insane. Think about that. What Jesus is saying, the spirit that lives in me is better than having Jesus standing right next to me. Now, that's, this is crazy. This is, it doesn't even make sense. But think about it. Think about if you went through life with Jesus literally standing right next to you. How many of you did Mud Mountain today? I don't know, is Phil Freeman still here? Phil, is, is Phil, did he leave? Y'all see that picture from last week, Mud Mountain, the kid that went over Mud Mountain? Y'all see that? <sighs> the, the, you, you guys see it or no? No, no, no. Check this out. Last Thursday, nice looking fella doing Mud Mountain, doing his thing like all of you today. He comes over the top of that Mud Mountain, right? And then all of a sudden, like, so Phil Freeman, uh, he was, he, one of the youth, youth leaders, youth pastors here, he shows me this video. He comes over and he says, look closer. I think, what am I, what am I looking at? And he pans in. The dude, he comes over Mud Mountain. His leg, his leg snaps in half. The bone is sticking out. Insane. But think about it. If you got Jesus right next to you, you just look at Jesus and say, Jesus, fix that real quick. Jesus walks over and just, whoosh, whoosh, fine, right? He walks off. Like that's, Jesus right next to you seems like pretty incredible. Can you imagine taking a test with Jesus right next to you? You wouldn't have to cheat because he's Jesus. You say, Jesus, help me, right? 
Jesus like, hey, Jesus, like, I don't know the answer. What is it, A, B, C, what, what, what do you got here? He would tell you, like, because he's Jesus. Like having Jesus right next to you, that's the dream world. Can you imagine being tempted? Come on, you're about to look online at something you shouldn't be looking at. All of a sudden you look over, Jesus right next, come on. Like, I didn't mean to hit that. I was going to like sports center, Jesus. I was, I, I didn't, I spelled, I, I meant sports. I didn't mean swimsuit. Like I was, I was wrong. My, my fingers were cramped. Right? But in the reality, can, can you imagine those that don't know Christ that you come in contact with at your school? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like, can you just tell them about you? Jesus, show them your hands. Like, show them your feet. Can you show, show them your sides? Just show them that big hole where that spear was Jesus. But what Jesus is saying, as incredible as it may sound to have Jesus doing life right next to us, what he's saying is the spirit in us is better than Jesus beside us. Right before Jesus ascends into heaven, he says this, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you'll receive power. Everybody say power. That was terrible. Everybody say power. power. That was powerful. All right. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So why? Like why will the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you? This is what the Bible says. It's not coming upon you to, 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 to give you the next level. It's not coming upon you to make you this elite spiritual, like, I'm, I'm better than everybody else. No, no, no. Because that's what a lot of us kind of think, like, the gifts of the Spirit. How many grew up Boy Scouts? Any Boy Scouts in the room? Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Rural Rangers, Missionettes, somebody that had badges as a kid, anybody? Come on. Yeah, all right. That's how we kind of view the gifts of the Spirit. It's like a badge. Oh, I, I got the gift of tongues. Check. I'm better than everybody else. I got the gift of prophecy. Check. No, that's not what the, that's not what the gifts of the Spirit are for. The Bible says it's to empower us. To accomplish all that Jesus is calling us to do. If you're taking notes, write this down. The gifts of the Spirit are to us, but for others. Well, what God wants to do, it's, it's not so you can come down to an altar at camp and then hit the next level like it's a video game. It's not so you can have a, a badge to say, look at how spiritual I am. It's to empower us so that way when you go back to your school in the fall, you have the power to tell somebody about Jesus. You have the power to stand up for your faith. You have the power to pray for somebody. I, I, get, I get real angry because I've seen so many instances where people only want the gifts of the Spirit for an altar call environment, but the altar call is environment is to empower us to go out. That's the whole point of it. People said Thursday night is the, is the great commission night, not the Holy Spirit night. Why are you preach the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is to empower us to fulfill the great commission. I'm going to talk about three things the Spirit gives us power to do. Number one, number one. Spirit of God gives us power. And it gives us power to do a billion things. I'm just going to give you three tonight. Number one. Gives you power to share Jesus. Paul says this in 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 2. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Everybody say power. power. Yeah, you're catching on. You guys are good. So that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom but on the power of God. Now, I want you to think about who is saying this. The Apostle Paul, he used to be Saul. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was brilliant. Paul probably had the first five books of the Bible memorized. If he was to get in a theological debate with anybody in this room, he would destroy us. This guy is brilliant. He's the greatest church planner in the history of the world. This guy, this guy wrote half the New Testament. Like, like this guy, like this is Paul the Apostle. And here's what even Paul says. My message and my preaching, not with wise and persuasive words, 
He said, it's not about the things that come out of my mouth. It's not about me. It's about the power of the Spirit of God. Listen, we got a lot of people from our church, a lot of teenagers from our church, but I will tell you this. My church is doomed if it depends on my preaching ability or my wisdom. My church can't be about my preaching or about my wisdom. It has to be founded in the Holy Spirit. It, people will get saved not because of my wise words, but because of what the Lord is doing. What the Spirit of God is doing in us and through us. The only, only ministry regrets I have over the last 15, 16, 17 years since I've been pastoring or youth pastor or whatever I've been doing is putting the Holy Spirit in the box. There have been times, like I'm going to be vulnerable with you guys, okay? I'm going to be real with you. There have been times as a pastor where I've said maybe it's better that we downplay the power of the Holy Spirit. That's been my biggest regret in, in ministry. And as a, as a pastor, the more I talk about the Spirit of God, the more our church continues to grow. Check this out, Acts chapter 1, 4, and 5. On one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised when you have heard that you have heard me speak about for John baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the holy spirit you will receive power everybody say power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to all the ends of the earth now remember who Jesus is talking to Remember, he's talking to the 12 disciples in Acts right here. And the disciples up until this moment, they couldn't get a lot right. Now, I want you to think about the disciples. Before Jesus hung on a cross for the sins of humanity, he asked him to stay up and pray. He said, look, can we do all night or can you guys just pray with me? We'll do a little lock-in in the garden. And they all fell asleep. The disciples could not even stay awake to pray with Jesus. They did all kinds of dumb stuff. Like they were arguing all the time about, I want to be the greatest. No, I want to be the greatest. I want to sit next to Jesus in heaven. Peter's chopping guys' ears off, aiming for their head. Like, like how are these idiots going to change the world? There's just no way. This ragtag group, fishermen, tax collectors, what do they know? They don't know anything about leadership. They can't preach. Oh, they're going to go change the world? doesn't even make sense. You know only one of the 12 showed up where Jesus told them he would return after the resurrection? Jesus says, I'm going to die. But guys, give me a couple days. I'm coming back. Meet me here. Only one of them showed up. And then, and then Thomas is like, think about, just, uh, think about how dumb these guys are at times. And I love them. We're going to talk about how great they are in a second. Thomas sees Jesus. He just spent three years with Jesus, right? So, like, you know each other well. And he's still like, Psh. I mean, it looks like you, but, like, I don't know. Like, I saw you die. Like, show me, the, sh get, show me your hands real quick. What? Like, Jesus. Like, you're Jesus. And he's like, I don't believe it. Uh, this must be some trick. Let me see the holes where they crucified you. Like, that's the disciples that are going to change the world? And Jesus says this. He says, just, just wait. You know why he tells them to wait? Because on their own, they're absolutely powerless. Like, I got to pull up my house and my kids all the time. Like, I want to go swimming. I want to go swimming. They're, they're, my daughter just turned eight. My son is nine. And all the time, I want to go swimming. You know what I always say? Wait until somebody gets out there. Wait on me. Wait on your mom. You know why I tell them to wait? Because if they go out there by themselves, I'm afraid they're going to drown. And what, what Jesus is saying, wait on me because I know if you guys try to go out there by yourselves, you will certainly drown. So let's, what are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? Here it is. Here it is. So remember, okay, I'm trying to take you on a little journey. Jesus says, not only do we do the things I've done, but even greater things. And then he says, hey, guys, I'm going to send you something. i got to leave. I'm going to send you something, but wait for it. So here, now here it happens. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
when they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, what they were, that's the moment that they were waiting on. Jesus says, he says, wait. Y'all don't do anything because you're going to screw this thing up. Y'all wait. Wait on the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. They were all filled with the Spirit. Right now, approximately 2 billion people on planet Earth claim to worship Jesus. This, this message of Christ, it did. It, it went to the ends of the earth. People began to get saved by the thousands. Why? What made this ragtag group of guys different? What made them go from being terrified? I want you to think about Peter for a second. When, when Jesus was being crucified, people kept asking Peter three different times, hey, aren't you one of the guys? No, 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 no. Nah, you got me confused with somebody else. Somebody else, hey, aren't you one of the disciples? Aren't you friends with, with Jesus? No, 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 no. That ain't me. A third time somebody said, hey, I, I feel like, weren't you one of his followers? He's like, Phew. Now I got one of those faces. I look like everybody, right? Ain't me. And then now all of a sudden, not that many months later, Peter is preaching in the same community where they would have crucified him the same way for being bold about his faith. And 3,000 people are getting saved. How does that happen? The power of the Holy Spirit. That's it. The Spirit gives us power to share Christ. The Spirit also gives us power when we are weak. Romans 8.26 says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. There's, we see two different types of speaking in tongues in Scripture. One is public and it needs an interpretation. The other is this one. It's personal and it's to build your spirit. That's why I'm never going to say, everybody stand up and speak in tongues. Because it's personal. You'll never, you'll never, unless I feel like there should be an interpretation, you'll never hear me speak in tongues. Why? Because it's personal. It's between me and, it's between me and God. It's God is building my spirit. I just offended people on both sides of this theological debate. The Holy Spirit, he says, when you're weak, just pray. And when you don't know how to pray, I will pray through you. The, the Spirit is our advocate. I guess some friends are going to come up and help me. Here's how we're, here's how we're living our, our life. I think I got another, I got another knife somewhere. Where did that go? Oh, you hit it from me, dude. Come on, bro. I'm trying to preach and you're. A lot of us have just different things in life that we're trying to accomplish. And, and on our own, like we could do it. Like I could this is, what, what, what is this? What kind of, this is a, for a, a sheetrock. This is not made for this. But I could do it. I could, I could, I could eventually, you holding on tight, dude, I'm pretty, I'm pretty buff. Y'all see that? I'm making some, can you zoom in, on, zoom in right here, bro. Can you zoom in right here? Like, I don't feel like it looks good on camera, but I'm making, I'm, I'll do it right here. Zoom in, sir. <laughs> Closer. Okay, the reality is this is going to take me a long time. But I promise you, I could do it. And many of you, that's how you're walking with the Lord. You can do it because, listen, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, the Spirit of God is with you. But then there's a second work of the, of the Spirit to be filled with the, the Spirit. And, and mostly what you're doing is you, because you're embarrassed by the, the Spirit of God or you don't understand it, you say, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not, I'm just, uh, I'll do it on my own. And man, I keep battling this sin in my life. But I got it. I, I got it. It's going to take, take me a minute. I keep being, I mean, I'm just tempted a lot, but I bet I, I can figure this thing out. 
I feel like I'm making a bit of progress here. Can you tell on camera I'm sweating now? Wow, it's going to take a minute. Y'all hold with me. I'll be done about 4 a.m. I'm going to. Man, I know my friends. I know they need Jesus. I'm going to tell them. But I keep getting so insecure. But I got that. So I, at some point, I'll get, I'll get to it. I'm like, I, oh, I got I got a little groove here, bro. I'm working. I feel good. I just don't have any peace in my life, though. But maybe I can I can start doing some stuff though, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna create my own peace. <laughs> I, I can do that. I don't have any joy in my life, but I bet you I can carve some joy out of this stupid. Freaking and, and we're going through. This is how we're going through life. Can you do it? Yeah, you can do it. Without accessing the Holy Spirit daily in your life, without yielding your life to the Holy Spirit, you, eventually, <laughs> you're just going to wear yourself out. But, but check this out, check this out. Here, just, just, yeah, hold it. Okay, the chainsaw sucks, but you get the point. This thing is stupid. I'm going to fire all of my facilities, guys. You guys get off the stage. My whole illustration is The sermon's over. Let's pray. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The, <laughs> the reality is there's more power available, but we don't know how to use it. We're scared of it, and we feel like I, I'd rather just do it on my own. I don't, I don't want to access the power of God. And just like that Mercedes, just like that chainsaw, there's more power available. The Bible says whenever I am weak, then he is strong. You know what you call that right there? That was called a sympathy clap because you all feel bad for that. But don't feel bad. I don't, I'm cool. I don't care. You're struggling. There's more power available. Some of you, you man, you're going to school and you cannot figure out why can't I get this together because you're not accessing a life full of the Holy Spirit. You're not accessing the, the fruit. Listen, and the fruit of the Spirit, it's not a gift. The fruit of the Spirit is something that we actually have to cultivate. Fruit is not given. Fruit is cultivated. And some of you got to begin to work on that life of joy, work on that life of patience, work on that life of self-control. But the gifts, the gifts are freely given. I don't give gifts to my kids if they don't want them. My kids come to me and say, Dad, I don't want anything for my birthday this year. <laughs> Save me some cash. I appreciate that. I'll tell you a story about my daughter not too long ago. She was bugging me for some stuff, and she was yelling at me. Dad, I want this. Dad, I want ice cream. Dad, I want candy. Dad, I want, you know, you know what I did? No, 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 and no. You know why? It was all about her. But then we, we went to Starbucks. There was a homeless guy sitting outside of Starbucks. And she walks in. And my daughter is like loud and fairly rude, okay? So she's not like the quiet type. And she's like pulling on my on my pants, but that's not like her. So I'm like, what, why is she acting so weird? And she's like, dude, 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 dude. So I get down, I said, what? She said, there's a, there's a homeless guy outside. I said, okay. Are you scared? She said, no. Do you have any money? I said, yes. She said, how much? <laughs> I said, I don't know. Pull my wallet out, and this, I never carry cash. But for whatever reason, that day, my wallet was full. <laughs> I 
I said, how much you want to give him? She said, all of it. You know what I did? I took every, every dollar. I said, here, baby, you go, you go give it to him. She said, will you go with me? I said, absolutely will. See, some of you, you've been begging God for something, and it's all about you. But the moment you say, Father, I want you to give me, not about me, so I can help your people. The Father who freely gives, the Father, listen, I I'll be honest with you. When my daughter's all about her, I'm not all about it. But when my daughter says, I want to, like I want to help somebody else, I will give her everything that I have. When you begin to say, Holy Spirit, I want you not so I can have this spiritual badge, but I want you so I can help other people. I want you so I can lead people. I want you so I can tell people about you. Oh, then the Father says, how much do you need? Some of you feel like you're going through life right now, trying to cut down a massive tree with a pair of scissors. There's more power available. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'll boast. I'll boast. All the more gladly about my weakness, so Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. People tell me a lot of times, people, nice people in my church, usually older people, I like to make fun of myself. Because I just feel like if I make fun of myself, I can get out of the way before they start making fun of me. So old people, that little bit, Adam, you should not be so self-deprecating. You should think more highly of yourself. And I always tell them the same thing. No, no, you should be more self-deprecating and think way less of yourself. Because the reality is, it's in my weakness that he is made strong. It, I, it's not about me. It's never been about me. It never will be about me. It's in my weakness. And it's in your weakness. The Holy Spirit allows us in our weakness to live a supernatural life in a very natural world. Jesus says, you'll do greater things. Why? Because it's not about you. How can I do greater things than Jesus? Because it ain't about you. It's still about Jesus. The Holy Spirit also allows us to experience the fullness of God. You, you know, you haven't, I'm not trying to offend any of the dudes in the room, but you're not, you're not really a man, like really a man, until you cut something down with a chainsaw. I'm just saying, like, I don't want to offend you. I'm not trying to be sexist or chauvinist. I'm just saying, dudes, like, there's a passage into manhood. And if you're, like, 45 in this room and you're thinking, I've never done this, I just want you to know there's an upgrade available for you. Get yourself, go, go home. Get yourself a chainsaw. Man, I'm just telling you, something supernatural happened. So nothing breaks my heart more than to see people like you give their lives to Jesus just to stay out of hell when God is saying, I got so much more for you. It breaks my heart. People miss out on the fullness of God because they say, I just don't want to go to hell, so I'm going to say this little prayer real quick so I don't have to split hell wide open. And the Spirit of God says, no, I got more for you. I've got joy for you. I've got peace for you. I've got fullness. I've got purpose for you. I want to ask you this question. Has your life changed much since you started following Jesus? Have you possessed the... The fruit of the Spirit, the love and the joy and the peace and the patience and the kindness, the goodness, faithfulness, the gentleness, the self-control. Does that, does that describe you even a little bit? Because like I said, those are fruit that we have to continue to, to cultivate. And then if, if you begin to cultivate those fruit, but you're just hungry for the gifts of the Lord, I, I'd ask you this. 
Have you positioned yourself to receive from God? I took my kids to a water park one time, and there's this bell that goes off. And every time this bell goes off, this giant bucket dumps us all this water, right? So the first two or three times the bell goes off, and my kids are like, what is going on? And then obviously they see it, and then they pick up on it. By the third or fourth time, the bell goes off, my kids just like everybody else, whoosh, take off running. And I would, I would challenge you. Are you positioning yourself to be more full of the world? Think about the movies that you watch, what you see online, the, the video games that you play. Are, are you positioning yourself for more of the filth in the world? Are you positioning yourself for more of, of God? Well, listen, when, the, when you experience the fullness of God, He begins to guide you in a way you never even dreamed possible. Some of you, you're wondering, what's my purpose in life? Where am I headed in, in life? Anybody ever done like a corn maze before? You know a corn maze? We, we, we took the family to Fort Worth, Texas a couple years ago, and there's this giant maze. And Christy stood up in this like little tower, and me and my, my two kids, we run through this maze, and Christy starts telling us what to do. Christy, my wife, she was leading worship here tonight. It was in case she wouldn't know. No, no, it's fine. That's not the point. She has good self-esteem. Don't worry about it. And she would begin telling my kids, go this way, go this way. And my son is very compliant. And so he's like, yes. Chrissy would be like, go left, right, left. What's up, Chris? But my daughter, she's not compliant. She's like, I'm going to do it on my own. And so Chrissy's up there, right? And she's like, she's just trying to do the exact opposite, right? I'm going to figure this out. One kid ended up super happy and successful. The other kid ended up frustrated and crying. Which one do you think was happy? The one that was, listen, he had a guide. That's what the Spirit of God is. It's our, it's our guide. He sees the things that we don't see. He sees your future. He sees your obstacles. And then look, and if you listen, if you learn how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, when it seems like you should be going right, he'll say, hey, go left. I don't get it, but okay, God. I look back at the most difficult moments of my life. And it's the moments I was angry at God. When I was a student pastor at People Church, I'm going to tell you this, People Church kids, listen to this. I know her, three of Herbert's kids are in this room, and I love them. When I left People Church, I was angry at God because I thought, that's my dream job. And I got my dream job when I was 20 years old. And I was angry at my wife because I left to travel with her. And I was mad, and I said, no, no, no. I'm supposed to go this direction, but the Spirit of God was leading me this direction, and I was mad, and I thought he was wrong. And I ended up just like my daughter, frustrated, anxiety, depression. Literally, I would sit at my house. I would eat Cheerios for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had no purpose. I was angry at God. But you know what God was doing? He was changing me. He's letting me know my identity is not about this or about this. It's about who he is inside of me. See, he was trying to take me through a process because I was like my daughter and I was too stubborn to listen to the Holy Spirit. See, if we'll listen to the voice of God, he'll be our guide and he'll take us to a place of fruitfulness and a place of purpose and a place of success. And in the fullness of God, it always allows us to be in his presence. Man, I, I, I swear, <laughs> when I was sitting here and I was, I was worshiping and I, I look across the room and there's hundreds of you worshiping. And I thought, what a presence of God. I want you to know this and I want to be very clear about this. The spirit of God that is in you is the same at your house tomorrow night as it is right here. The Spirit of God that is in you 
is the same at your school as it is right here. The only thing that's different is you. The, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit's not a chameleon. He's not like, oh, I'm scared of your friends. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna chill at school. He's the same. It's us that. And listen, when we walk with the Spirit of God, we never have to walk in fear. Those of you that are parents in the room, you know that sometimes your children, both my kids, sometimes they'll scream, Daddy! Late at night. So I'm scared I'm outside. What do I do? I run into their room. I don't have to say a word. Sit on the edge of their bed. And everything is okay. They roll over and they go back to sleep. Why? Because the Father's presence is in the room. When we walk with the Holy Spirit, we don't ever have to walk in fear. Because, because He's more powerful. Because He understands. Because He he knows. Some of you, as you're walking with God, you, you think, there's got to be more. I have the worship band. You guys go ahead and come on back up. And I want you to know, there is more. There's an upgrade available for your life. Some of you, it's not a gift. Some of you, it's fruit that it's on you to cultivate. Others of you, man, it is a gift that God wants to give to you. But listen, you got to be able to receive it, not for your sake, but for others' sake. The Spirit of God will challenge you, will strengthen you, will comfort you, direct you. The Spirit of God convicts you. The Spirit of God empowers you. The Spirit of God will change you. Here's where I'm at in my life. I'm 37. I've pastored for a while now, and I realize I know less than I ever thought I have in my entire life. The older you get, like I know some of you guys, you like know everything. The older you get, the more you realize, I don't know nothing. But here's the one thing I'm certain of. I just want more, I just want more God. I just, I just want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. And, and so tonight, we're not going to pray for everybody to get a specific gift from God. But what I do want to pray is those of you that are hungry for more of God, that you would come down and you would lift your hands to heaven and you would say, God, I just want more of you. God, I don't know what that looks like, but I want more of you. God, I don't know what, what gift you want. The Bible says the Spirit decides what gift to give. So, God, I don't know what gift you want, to, but God, I, I just want more of you. And whatever that looks like, that's what I want. And, and here's what I, I don't know why. Like, I know that God is old. He's been around since the beginning of times. So like, clearly he's, he's old. But, like, he, he's not, like, walking around heaven with, like, a cane with like cataracts and heart palpitations, right? Oh. So you don't got to scream at him when you pray. Like what? But why do we do that? Like what do we, when we pray for, like what do we, like we just start like, we like start just like yelling a lot. Like we think the louder we pray, like God's like, oh, I didn't hear you earlier, but now I got it. <laughs> Thank you for screaming at me. You know, we got to, you know, yell at him. You know, you got to run around. You just say, God, I, it's, it's not about what he wants to do externally. It's about what he wants to do internally. God, I just want more. God, whatever that is, God, I just want more. God, not so I can have a spiritual badge, but so that when I go back home, I'm going to be able to tell my parents about you. When I go back home, I'm going to tell my, my lost friends, my, my lost family, I'm going to be able to tell them about you, Jesus. God, when I go back home, I'm, I, want, I want the Spirit of God so inside. I want to be so full of your Holy Spirit. Father, that I, I can't help but it just to flow out of me. I can't help but to live for you, but to be bold for you in everything that I do. I can't. I can't help but say no to temptation because the Spirit of God is so 